and standing as we sing to the Lord, majesty, worship his majesty. Jesus is on the throne. Aren't you excited about that? He is on the throne. coming. He's coming. 
And you know, we look at this world and it's going to get worse. It has to be. That's biblical prophecy being fulfilled. The stage has to get set. We're saying even quickly, come Lord Jesus, like John did in Revelation. But for that to happen, it's not going to get better. It's not going to get better. However, for us Christians, we're not appointed to wrath. That's why I'm a pre-tribber. Amen. That means I go out before the tribulation. I've not been appointed to wrath. Think about Sodom and Gomorrah. God got Lot out of there. Why? The righteous are not tied in with the wicked. And how about Noah's Ark? He got the righteous out of there. Not tied in with the wicked. It's pre-tribbers. If you're a mid-tribber, that's sad. If you're a post-tribber, that's even worse. But I'm a pre-tribber. Amen. I'm out before the wrath of God and the day of the Lord. All right. So we're going to sing this. The king is coming. When we get to the king is coming, you can sing my king is coming. Jesus is coming. He's on his way. Are you ready? Are you ready? Got something in the oven that might burn up a little bit? That's okay. He's coming. You'll be fine. All right? Just don't take an airplane ride with two pilots who are Christians. Amen? If you're not saved. I'm just all I'm saying. Let's sing this together. Ready? Oh, the King is coming. Oh, my King. My King is coming. I just heard. church here, uh, or we can have some young people here, some young teenagers, grab them out of the car and bring them downstairs in the team room, that's where we're staging out of there, um, and then of course they're going to take those off to the Sunday breakfast mission in Wilmington there, and that's something we have been for, mentioning to them for a couple of while, I know, a while now, for Brother Nate takes groups in there, I know the Haynes going there a lot for us, they're also help out in that need there, but they're due next Sunday, please get them in here, or throughout the week, you can bring them also we have the daycare, just buzz in, tell them who you are, and so on. But please, make sure you mask up before you come into daycare if you do. All right? Uh, also coming up, Silver Saints having the Christmas gifts. Uh, we're in need of those different things, items. We've been doing this for probably, you know, good 40 years or so, thereabouts. I'm not sure, but it's been a long, long time here. You all know what, the, uh, what we need for those baskets. Please. When you do bring them in, there's a basket back there on the table before you bring them back here. Or if you have an own bag, that'll help 
also on Ozera. If you have any questions on this for his activity, Charlotte McGarry has all the answers. Okay, this, this lady is well known for just answering all questions that she has. Trust me, she's married to Scott, who's standing out there. So, just to let you know on that, for us, need, need to get those back in here, I believe, on December 6th. And then on December 11th, on that day, they need to hand these uh, flowers gifts to take them to the homes of the shut-ins we have or on our list here. Uh, and we need drivers, so also please let her know that you can come out that day and uh, for us with that to drive and get those gifts out. Also coming up, choir. When? I'm glad you asked. Today. Right after for us, Pastor Carlo has his 42-minute message going on. But anyway, right after the morning service, uh, choir meeting right down here. Now, I'm going to let you know, if you need the fellowship, perfect day to be outside the fellowship. Don't linger in the auditorium, because I'll tell you what, last week I got lasered. Lasered from her. Please keep moving on. So just if you can, please, uh, we, uh, we love the fellowship, and that's what the church is all about, fellowship and things like that. But also, they want to try to get the choir started also. So try that for us. Moments in here, then if you need to continue to talk, tell your stories about for us, how your week went, let's go on outside here so this choir gets started practicing when? Today, right after the service. Right? Got that going on. Senior class also has a fundraiser coming up. Not coming up, but they do. They had uh, for us uh, coupon books here for 25 hours. Great deal of that. I'm always using mine, buy one, get one, different things like that. So, if you need uh, for one of these books here, they have them on hand, right? See me, you're on the camera. Brother Nate has his, Caitlin McGarry for has hers, maybe in the back. Uh, Lily and Rojas, you have yours? Don't have hers. But anyways, you at least have two people here, have those books, get them, for us, use them. You can start using them right now. And I would have for us to make a, a great blessing to the senior class this year. Especially because uh, so a lot of their uh, fundraising has been depleted. Some different things in the school here. We have to do change up here. So if you can help out buying a coupon book for us, please do. If you just buy the coupon, coupon book, if you don't want to use it, I don't know about you, but I know somebody will, will you, that will take advantage of it. I will. But anyways, but uh, making a Christmas gift also, you can do that. And I think that should do it for us coming up on Wednesday evening. For us, I'll be finishing up, not finishing up, I got two more weeks of uh, what, what is your destiny here going on. Wednesday at 7 o'clock. See ya. Or not see ya, but you'll be able to hear me. A little girl was sitting in her bedroom, pondering the existence of the universe and all the creatures that are on the earth. She was perplexed because her dad told her that humans evolved from monkeys. Mom, on the other hand, told her, God made people. Try as she might, she could not reconcile the two. Paris had thought that one of her parents would lie to her. Seeking an answer, she approached her mom who was standing in the kitchen. She says, Mom, you and Dad have told me different explanations as to where humans came from. After much thought, I've been unable to reconcile the two. Can you tell me how both of you can be right? Well, the mother said, I was telling you about my family, and Dad was telling you about his. <laughs> Good morning, we are the Gideons. You're probably wondering why I'm standing up. That was an attention getter. And some people don't know who the Gideons are. We, we come across a lot of people. And of course, the qualifying question is, have you ever stayed in a hotel? Have you ever traveled? And most people can answer that to the affirmative. Well, if you've ever looked in that center drawer, most times when you open that up, there'll be a Gideon Bible there, placed by the Gideons, which we're proud to say. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. In the 1930s, it was a law of many states 
the teachers were to read Bibles to their students. In short time, there was no funding for those Bibles, so the Gideons at their convention voted overwhelmingly to supply the Bibles to the schools at that time. Our organization started in 1899 by two traveling businessmen, and by the end of their day on one of their business uh, ventures, they stopped to rent a hotel room. There was only one room left, so they opted to share the room together. In a short time, they shared their Christian faith with each other and had a Bible study, and from that time on said that they were going to spread the word of God through hotels as they could. And of course, it wasn't until 1908 that uh, they started putting putting the Bibles in the, in the uh, hotels. We're in 202 countries, 107 languages. We're based in Nashville, Tennessee for our main headquarters. Of course, we have camps, us Gideons, uh, Brother Dave Bailey, Brother Andres, Brother Juan Romero, and Brother Charlie Curlet. Curlet. He's in our camp as well. Um, 2.3 billion scriptures have been given out since uh, the Gideon started just 90 million last year. We have 195,000 members, and, and of course we have auxiliary too. Auxiliary are the wives of the Gideons, which we're probably 300,000 strong. Now you might say, well, that math doesn't add up. Well, not all wives are, are uh, active in the auxiliary, but what they do in our camp is they do the uh, doctor's offices, the dental offices, nursing homes, and there are prayer warriors. They pray for us, and of course we all need prayer. We have the Gideon app, which most young people like to put on their phone, um, and they can have the Bible right on their phone. We have the PWTs that we hand out to the colleges, to our hospital workers, to our emergency workers, but this, this also comes in a Spanish, and then of course to our military workers as well. We have the Gideon uh, card program, which you can give Bibles and to your love, you know, to a loved one that you've lost, and, and uh, donate Bibles there. And we even have a pastor card. Our camp sent one to your pastor last month, which was Pastor Appreciation Month. It's not too late to still get one if you'd like. You can send one to the pastor. You might say, "Well, how can uh, how can we help?" Well, number one, we would cover your prayers that we can get into the hotels. Now this box here, I brought, it has Bibles in it because there's some hotels we can't get into. They won't let us. We have one downstate that they let it, that wouldn't let us get into a long time. For a long time, we kept going after them. And we go back every six months to check the Bibles. So they finally let us come in. And uh, six months later, when we went there to uh, re, re uh, supply the Bibles himself, he was waving us in. And his reason was, he said, they're not tearing up my rooms anymore. Now, we'll take any chance, any reason we can get to get into the hotel, so we recovered your prayers for that. This box here is empty because four of these went to Kenya with your church group. And Brother Nate, he had to, he couldn't carry the box themselves, had to put them in their uh, suitcases of all the, all the people who were gone. But he told me, I, the way he talked, I think he could have used 40 boxes when he went there. So just pray that we can get into hearts, get into countries. And, of course, pray for this COVID. You know, for the past three years, we've been coming to Trunks of Blessing and handing out to the scriptures to the people there and weren't able to do that this year as well. The other thing we would cover is your help. We're looking for Christian businessmen. Stu, Stu Linder, who you've probably seen, tall Stu, come in here for many years. He's the one who recruited me. And uh, Brother Juan and Brother Andres and Brother Charlie. Brother Dave Bailey... He came to a church report here probably three years ago and was so taken with the church that he stayed with the church. That's how he became about the church. So we would, we would, we'll be in the back to talk to you back there. And the other thing is, if you'd like to, to give to our ministry, we have pamphlets in the back we weren't able to hand out. We usually put in with the uh, church bulletin. And we'll be back here to speak to you and also talk to you if you'd uh, like to join. We'll have applications back there too. We'll see if you qualify for that. We would just ask and pray that you, if you could contribute to us, we'll be in the back there at the end of the service. We appreciate so much for Fairwinds Baptist Church uh, supporting the Gideons for so many years. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and just mention a few uh, prayer requests this morning. Uh, some with uh, Brother Pyle, How- Howard Pyle this morning. Uh, we need to be praying for Tom Pyle. He has a stress test for the, his heart coming up on the 24th, so needs prayer there. Uh, Renee Factor, has her chemo begins on Wednesday, so be praying for her. Uh, Robert Norris, this is Sam's grandpa. Uh, usually, the family be, comes over and sits on that side there, but he's uh, just diagnosed with cancer, so we need to be praying for him. Uh, we need to pray for Dave and Peggy Warner uh, in the passing of their daughter, Suzanne Kelly. This is from Manley and Julie Solomon. Uh, uh, there was a prayer request in the church app uh, for Jimmy. This was acquaintance of uh, Cindy Armstrong, my mom. He had colon surgery on the 4th, and he's doing well, so praise the Lord for that. Um, also, we mentioned last week about our missionaries, um, Kevin and Mary Brunner in the Philippines, and we got an update from them that overall they're doing well, some damages to the buildings and things like that, but praise the Lord, they're all doing well. And I know Brother Cole as well has some family over there, but he said they're all doing well uh, too. We want to be praying for Tanya uh, Tarver. This is a friend of Pastor Carlo, battle on cancer. Jenny Thomas, Bonnie Kirby, Carol Heater, Tom Dixon, all for their health. Uh, Chris Welsh uh, continues to need our prayer there as he's deployed, but also all of our military, uh, servicemen, servicewomen there. Trudy Wilkerson, battle on chemo, Marion Pru as well. And uh, continue to pray for our country with the coronavirus uh, situation, just for safety there. And the Lord continue to have his hedge of protection uh, for us, even as a church, for the school, that we can continue to minister there. So I know there's a lot of prayer requests, a lot of burdens. Uh, so continue to pray that way. Also, continue to be faithful for your tithes and your offerings. We're going to pray over that here as well. But you can use the church app or the offering plates in the back for that. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. And as I pray, let me encourage you, you pray as well. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've done. Lord, I was thinking in Psalms 46.10, it says to be still and know that you are God. You will be exalted among the heathen. You will be exalted in the earth, Lord, and we're thankful that you're in control. Lord, I ask that you'll be with each and every person that is here, Lord, as we come humbly here this morning to hear from you. Lord, we're a needy people. Lord, we need you. We're dependent upon you, and we're asking that you'll move in a mighty way. Those that have upcoming surgeries and procedures, battling chemo, Lord, as, as Brother Jerry mentioned even earlier uh, last week, it just seems like so many people with the word cancer just popping up, popping up. And Lord, we're just casting our care on you and, and uh, just we're going we're gonna to just trust, Lord, that you are in control. I ask that you'll continue to have your hedge of safety amongst our church and our school. Lord, continue to allow us to be a blessing, to have a burden for lost souls. Lord, may we see people the way that you see them. Lord, be with the Gideons and their, their program there. Lord, as they're handing out your word, we know it doesn't return void. And continue to be with our pastor. God, and direct him. Give him strength. Continue to give him uh, just a, a, the vision for the church and that he may God and direct and encourage. Lord, be with him. And we just ask that you'll be with all the prayer requests on the prayer sheet. Our missionaries, Lord, strengthen them, meet their needs, have your hand upon them. And Lord, we just thank you for all the blessings that you give. And we just ask that you'll have your hand upon each and every one of us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Nate. Let's all stand together. We're going to sing a hymn in just a moment. And let me give you a little explanation of it. We sang it a few weeks ago. If you ever work third shift or know someone who's worked third shift, as we all stand together, think about this, how tired you are waiting for that time to come where you can get off of work and go home. In Israel, there were watchmen, and they would be on the walls, and they would look, and from the going down of the sun to the rising of the sun, they would have to watch and make sure no enemies were coming to hurt the city, the people in the city. And so you could imagine by morning time, they were so tired, they just couldn't wait for that sun to rise. So David takes his pen in hand, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and begins to write Psalms 130. And he says, I'll wait for you, Lord, more than they that watch for the morning. It was such an intense desire, a heart for the Lord. And that's where this song was born out of, out of Psalms 130. We'll sing it together called I Will Wait For You. It begins with a, an older Scottish hymn in the beginning. We'll sing together. Beth will sing the verses and we'll all join her on the chorus. And we'll sing the song to the Lord. I will wait for you. Lord, from the depths I
darkest places I will call. Incline your ear to me anew, and hear my cry for mercy, Lord. Were you to count my sinful ways, how could I come before your throne? Yet full forgiveness meets my gaze. I stand redeemed by grace alone. judgment. This picture is what's going to happen that day, the great white throne judgment when the books are open. All of us believers are behind the throne of God. All the unsaved from the beginning of time to that very moment. Those sea of faces, that innumerable company will be before God. But also, Satan's going to show up. And the Bible says when we see Satan, we're going to say, is this the man that made the nations to tremble? And God is going to give him, the accuser of the brethren, the very seed of sin, God's going to give him his final judgment. And the Bible says he's going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Aren't you excited about that? I'm so looking forward to that day. Amen. We can't blame everything on the devil. We have a sinful flesh. But boy, he has done a lot of damage in this world. He's the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of dis disobedience. And guess what? It's not a president and a senate and a congress that's having a whole bunch of issues. Satan has an agenda. And that's why we as God's people need to pray. And have hope when we pray because this day is coming.
eternity in heaven with him. If you have your Bible this morning, uh, you're going to see two verses up there, but before we look at those verses, and uh, which is the text for this morning, I want you to open up to 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3. <clears throat> And then from there, of course, we're going to go, they'll bring it up, we're going to go to, we're going to, go to Haggai 2, 6 and 7, then Hebrews 12, 25 through 29. So we're going to look at three texts this morning to introduce what I want to speak about this morning. 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 5. <clears throat> now I'm sure you've read this on your own. Paul writes... Uh, <clears throat> to young Timothy, and he says, this know also, this know also, in addition to what he's already told him, and I'm not getting into all that, then the last day's perilous time, time shall come. I think we would agree with that. For men shall be lovers of their own flesh, their own selves, covetous, <clears throat> boasters, proud, blasphemers, 
disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. That's quite a list right there, is it not? <clears throat> and as we look at that list we just read, that would be plenty. But then he goes on in verse 3. He says, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, that means without self-control, fierce, that means brutal, despisers of those that are good. Those that are doing good, want to be good, they're despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, that means reckless, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Now look at verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such. The from such means all those we just talked about. From such, what's it say? Turn away. As we peruse and read over this list, we can see that we are in the very crux of this today as we look at this. And here is something that Paul wrote to young Timothy many, many years ago. As we look at the signs of the times and we see what's going on all around us, we can see we are in perilous times. Would you agree with that? I mean, we are in perilous times. Now, with that, go to Haggai chapter 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at verses 6 and 7. Haggai chapter 2. It's right before Zechariah. Haggai chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, turn to Hebrews chapter 12. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12, verses 25 through 29. Hebrews 12, 25 through 29. See that you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not, who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. <laughs> oh boy, we see that today. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, <clears throat> yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken. The removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. That word moved means shaken. Translated shaken. Let us have grace whereby we may serve acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. This morning I want to preach a message entitled there's a whole lot of shaking going on. <laughs> and that's the truth. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. Father in heaven we thank you for this blessed Lord's day. We thank you that we've come, Lord, able to minister and uh, to worship you this morning, Lord. We thank you for all the good music this morning. I pray, Lord, your Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts through the message of the word. I pray if there's someone here this morning who's never been born again, who's never trusted Jesus Christ as Savior, that before they leave here this morning, whether they're watching by Facebook Live, whether they're watching by the Internet, or they're here in person, they'll pray and invite Christ into their heart. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
German theologian E.W. Hangstenberg, who lived from 1802 to 1869, commented on Hebrews 2.27, which we just read. Hebrews 2.27 is based on Haggai 2, 6 and 7, which explicitly includes the nations within the scope of the prophecy. The implications are significant. It means the shaking referred to has been in progress for 20 centuries already and will continue until all things shakeable have been removed. That historian and theologian R.J. Ruxduni comments on Hebrews 12 are pertinent in this connection. This is what he said. There is a declared continuity between the words spoken to Moses on Mount Sinai and the words spoken by Jesus Christ. At Sinai, that voice shook the earth. Now in terms of Haggai 2, 6 and 7, all things again being shaken. We see that in Hebrews 12, 26. This is a continuous shaking to the end of the world, and its purpose is to shake down all things so that only things which cannot be shaken may remain. We read that in Hebrews 12, 27. History is thus a time of shaking in order to bring down all things whose foundation is not the rock. Jesus Christ. You believe that? Jesus Christ is the rock. He is the foundation, 1 Corinthians 3.11. He is the foundation, the rock of our salvation. Clearly, this echoes our Lord's final words in the Sermon on uh, the Mount, Matthew 7, 24 through 27. He alone is the unshakable foundation which can withstand the earthquakes and floods of history. Anything without him as the foundation will perish because history is of God's ordination. It moves to eliminate all that is against him and all that, that is not clearly for him. And we read that in verse 27, and this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as the things are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. God is literally shaking this world today. And he's been shaking this world for a long time. And he's been shaking this world because of disobedience of people. Of the people all, not just in the United States, but all around the world. God is shaking the governments of this world today. We look at the governments and the tragedy and all the problems of the governments, including America, all around the world today. God is shaking the economic system of the world today. The economy is important. People are concerned about the economy because our lifeblood of money flows through the economy. But God is shaking the economy today in this world. God is shaking the very things that men think are unshakable. I have news for you. God is shaking this world and he's going to continue to shake his world until Jesus Christ comes and takes us home to be with him. He's going to shake this world. But I tell you, there's a whole lot of shaking going on today as I look around at what's going on all around us today. When Jesus comes in his glory, appearing, his feet shall touch the Mount of Olives and there shall be a great earthquake. What a day that will be when Jesus Christ comes to take us home to be with him. Like Brother Jay said, I'm a pre-trib. Every morning when I got in bed, I jump and I just hate to keep that. I just keep on going up. My feet never hit the floor, but they do right now. He hasn't come to take us home yet. So Hebrews 12 tells us, however, that there, there are some things that can never be shaken. No matter how dark it gets, <clears throat> no matter how this world shakes, there are five things, five things that will never, ever, ever, ever be shaken. And I want you to listen closely this morning. You think about the world. You think about the situation that the, the world's in. You think about our country. You think about all the problems and the perils that we're going through. But there are five things that can never be shaken. Number one, God's throne will never be shaken. Amen? Right. God's throne will never be shaken. In Revelation chapter 4 and in verse 2, the Bible says this. 
And immediately I was in the spirit and beheld, behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on that throne. One day we're going to be around the throne of grace for all eternity. We're going to be enjoying the splendors of heaven. We're not going to have to worry about all the craziness that's going on in this crazy world. But God's throne symbolized his power, his authority, and his leadership. The things built by mankind on this earth will be shaken, but God's throne will never be shaken. Things men built, they fall apart. They don't last. They don't last. Cities. Governments, institutions, organizations, they're strong for a while, but over a period of time, they all start to disintegrate. I've been watching things on the Roman Empire, the, the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. If you ever did a study on that, the great Roman Empire, how strong it was, but over a period of time, it fell. It fell. Psalm 45, 6 says, Thy throne on God is forever and ever. What a great verse. Psalm 45, 6. Thy throne on God is forever and ever. One Satan or Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, an archangel tried to topple the throne of God. He thought he'd do more than God. But he know what happened to him. And I'll not get into all that this morning. But this morning, I want to exalt the Savior. I want you to know there's a throne of grace. And one day, we're going to be around that throne of grace. And I don't care how much this world's been shaken. We're going to be there. Amen. We're going to be there. And I pray you know Christ is your Savior. Because if you do not, you're not going to be there. You may be at the judgment seat of Christ, but <laughs> you'll be at the great white throne judgment, which they taught, taught, sang about this morning. But I'll tell you one thing, heaven's going to be a sweet place to be, and we'll be there for all eternity. So number one, God's throne cannot be shaken. Number two, God's word cannot be shaken. God's word cannot be shaken. Psalm 119 verse 89 says, <clears throat> forever thy word is settled in heaven. Forever thy word is settled in heaven. Uh, look at Isaiah chapter 40. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 40. And verse 8, if you want to turn and just listen, if I can get it here. Here it is, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8. It says this, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. I don't care how much this world, this world is shaken, God's word will stand forever. Forever, and then in Matthew chapter uh, twenty, say Matthew chapter twenty-four, and I didn't mark that one in my Bible. <clears throat> Matthew chapter twenty-four and verse thirty-five. It says, "Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away." Amen. Hear that? His throne won't be shaken. The word of God will never be shaken. Jesus stood in the temple in Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago and preached the word of God. Today the temple is gone, but the word of God still stands. Paul walked into Athens and beheld all the great buildings of the Acropolis. He walked up and down the Appian Way to Rome and saw the Forum and the Great Colosseum. And today these, many of these buildings are either not there or they lie in ruins. Skeptics, critics, liberals, interpreters, atheists, they've all come and gone. But the word of God has not lost one iota of power. It's still the same. It's still the same. It's still the power of God of the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Souls are being saved. Lives are still being changed by the word of God, by the power of the word of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit that works through the whole word of God, that convicts us of a man of his sin and lets him know he's a sinner on his way to an eternal hell if he doesn't become born again like Nicodemus in John chapter 3. That's the message. That's the word. That's what we give out. In the 17th century, a man by the name of Voltaire was an atheist. He made this prediction. He said, in 100 years, the Bible will cease to exist. Today, Voltaire is probably in hell. But the room in which he said those words houses a printed press, a printing press to print the word of God. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> Isn't that something? So, 
In centuries gone by, many have tried to destroy the Bible. They have. By burning, tearing, and many other ways. But the word of God always stands true. So, notice what Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4. And you all heard this a million times, but it bears repeating. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Paul told young Timothy, he said, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, uh, the saved, and the dead, the unsaved, that is appearing at his kingdom. Preach the word. That's what he told him. He said, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come <clears throat> when they will not endure sound doctrine. And that time is here. We see it today. People don't endure doctrine, the teachings of the word of God. We say it every week from this pulpit. And we try to teach the people of Fairways Baptist Church about what to believe, about what the Bible says. We teach them, we preach to them. And many, not just in our church or other churches, don't adhere to the word of God. They want to do it their way. They want to believe so far that's as far as they're going to believe. That's a sad testimony. We're supposed to be following the word of God. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts, after what they want to do, what's right in their own eyes, shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They have itching ears wanting to hear what they want to hear. And if you, if you go around long enough, you'll find someone who will agree with you. You will. I've had people leave our church and go to another church, and uh, they go, well, I like this church because this church tells me what I want to hear. And I tell them, well, if it's not from the word of God, then it's not any good. Right. It's got to be from the word of God. We should be following the word of God. And in verse 4 it says, They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And there's a lot of that going on today too. Well, a lot of these television preachers, you've got to be careful. You have to sift through what they're saying. But the only way you're going to know is if you're in the word of God yourself where you have discernment or understanding to be able to say, that's not right. And when he's saying, that's not right. And of course we have women preachers today which are scriptural and she's not right. <coughs> How well do you know the word? We know that whether, we know everything else about a lot of other things, but how much do we know the word of God? How much time do you spend in the word to know the word? To know when you hear something, it's not right. It's not right. We need to study the word of God. So God's word cannot be shaken. The son of, number three, the son of God cannot be shaken. The son of God cannot be shaken. Jesus Christ, the Eternal, only begotten Son of the only one true God cannot be shaken. First of all, his character cannot be shaken. In Hebrews 5, 3 we read, And you know that he was manifested to take away our sin, and in him there is no sin. Jesus was sent to uh, save us from our sin. The writer of Hebrews said that he was tempted in all points, as, but yet without sin. He was spotless, stainless, sinless, perfect life that he led on this earth. The Bible says in John, John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He came. He came for a reason. He came for a purpose. Because his father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We all know that verse, John three sixteen. But listen to what they said who knew him. Judas said, I have betrayed innocent blood. The centurion who crucified him said, surely this man was the son of God. The demons cried out, we know you are the son of the most high God. John the Baptist said, behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Peter said, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Paul said, God hath highly exalted him and give, gave him a name that is above every other name, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And I'm telling you today, all those who reject Jesus Christ, one day they're going to bow at the Savior. They're going to bow at the King of Kings. They're going to find out that all the stuff that they thought was right and all the things that they thought they were going to hold on to is all going to be shaken and gone. 
It's all going to be shaking and gone. How sad that will be that day. Then B, his nature cannot be shaken. In uh, Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17, the Bible says this. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. It's all his. I preached that message not too long ago. It's all his anyway. It all, it's all his. Everything's his. <clears throat> How many times we forget that? We forget all about that. Then in verse... Uh, 17, it says, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Yeah. Wow. That reminds me of John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Boy, that's great, is it not? You read Genesis chapter 1, it says the same thing, Genesis chapter 1 and 2. All things were made by him, without him was not anything made, it was made. In him was life, and this life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. The light came, was born, but the darkness of the world didn't understand. It couldn't understand the light that came into the world. But then in verse 11 of John 1, it says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And that happens today. Many don't want to hear about Christ. And many of his own, his own don't want to hear about him. Not faithful to church, not faithful to reading the word of God, not faithful to telling other people about Christ, not faithful to inviting anyone to church, not faithful in supporting the very ministry that God, that Jesus Christ died for. And that's the church. You can read that in Ephesians 5. It tells us all about it. Faithfulness, being faithful. <clears throat> See, his power cannot be shaken. Right. In Ephesians chapter 1 and in verse... 19, the word of God says this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power. His power cannot be shaken. Aren't you thankful for the power of God? Aren't you thankful for what Jesus Christ has done for us? You see, his power cannot be shaken. He's the only founder of a world religion who rose from the dead. All those other ones that they worship are all gone. None of them ever rose from the dead. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. This is why his power cannot be shaken. Over the grave of Muhammad, right, occupied. Over the grave of Buddha, right, occupied. But over the grave of Jesus Christ it is written in Luke 24, 6. He is not here, for he is risen. Hmm. His power cannot be shaken. And then D, his blood cannot be shaken. His blood cannot be shaken. First of all, his blood justifies. In Romans chapter 5, and, <clears throat> excuse me. In verses 9 and 10, the word of God says this. Well, verse 8, but God commanded his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood. We're justified by his blood. That's nothing we can do for ourselves. That is something that has been done for us. It's been done for us. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Jay mentioned that this morning. For if when we were enemies... And we were enemies prior to salvation. We were reconciled. Reconciliation means two brought together who were once apart. We see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Two who are now separated, they are reconciled through the ministry of reconciliation. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. I don't know about you, but I've been reconciled. I've been justified. And my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. One day I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Are you? I hope all you that are watching this morning 
are, are going to be in heaven one day. He died. He was our substitute. Number one, his blood justifies. Number two, his blood cleanses. His blood cleanses. 1 John 1, 7. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. We, re- we sing the song, what can wash away my sin? What's the answer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know it. Mm-hmm. What can make me whole again? Mm-hmm. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. God cannot see my sin because of the blood of Jesus. Just remember, we're sinners saved by grace. Amen? There isn't any money one here that's perfect this morning. <clears throat> Number three, <coughs> his blood redeems. First Peter 1, 18, 19. That we were redeemed not with silver or gold, <clears throat> but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. We were imprisoned in the prison of this house of sin. <laughs> we had no hope of being free. And then Jesus came along. Do you remember when he came along in your life? How did that happen? Someone opened up the word of God and they showed you what Jesus Christ did for you. He redeemed you. Number four, his blood redeems, but his blood also forgives. Hebrews 9, 22, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission or forgiveness of sin. Jesus had to shed his blood. <coughs> Why? Because Romans <coughs> 6, 23 says the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin and death. But the rest of the verse says, but the gift of God, we're going to, we all know about gifts, but we'll be exchanging them pretty soon, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, his blood forgives. I thank God for his blood that forgives us of our sin when we sin. Number five, his blood brings us close to God, Ephesians 2.13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off, have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. Once we were far off from God. And in God in his mercy and his grace he found us. Where did he find you? Do you remember where he found you? I remember where he found me. A hopeless sinner. Not saved. But he found me. And he saved me. And now my name is written in the last book of life. Number six. His blood overcomes the devil. Revelation 12, 10 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and and because they loved not their own selves, even unto death. His blood overcomes the devil. When the devil accuses us and tries to show us our sins, we can show him the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us. It overcomes that, his blood. His blood is powerful. His blood is saving He shed his blood for you and for me. And we forget that sometimes. We forget about what Christ has done for us. Number seven, his blood brings peace, Colossians 1.20. And by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of the cross. (coughs) Having made peace. I have peace now with the Savior. I'm still a sinner. I still sin. You still sin. But I thank God for 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Aren't you thankful for 1 John 1, 9? He always makes a way. Then letter E. His love cannot be shaken. His love cannot be shaken. John 3, 16. You know John 3, 16 by heart? Let's say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Aren't you glad that God loves you? God loves the world. But the world surely doesn't love him. And we see that every day. His love cannot be shaken. You know it doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, how you acted. <clears throat> whatever the case may be, God loves us. When we sin, when we mess up, he still loves us. He'll always love us, regardless of what we do. And thank God when we sin, we have an advocate, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, as it says in First John. 
We thank the Lord for that. His love cannot be shaken. In 1 John 4 and 10 it says, now, not that we love God, but that he first loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sin. His love appeased the wrath of God. Praise his name. Amen? You can say amen, doesn't hurt. Amen? There you go. <coughs> F, his purpose cannot be shaken. Luke 19.10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. He had a purpose. And that purpose cannot be shaken. People are still going to get saved because he came to seek and to save the sinner that's lost. Who do you know that's lost? He can use you as the instrument of a word-bearing person to tell someone who's not saved that Jesus Christ will save their eternal soul and they can spend eternity in heaven with him. Because, you see, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. This is his purpose in the world yesterday, today, and as long as the world lasts. In 1 John 3, 2, it says, Beloved, now are we the children of God? Right now we are. And it does not appear... Uh, what we shall be, but we know that when we shall, uh, that he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Praise his name. Praise his name. <clears throat> the Son of God cannot be shaken. Number four, I'm almost done. God's church cannot be shaken. God's church cannot be shaken. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And trust me, the gates of hell have been fighting against the word of God for centuries. Amen? Even in our own country we see it. Happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. And when they say that to me, I always say back to them, Merry Christmas. Christmas is about Christ. They use the word Christmas <clears throat> in their regular talk, and they would stop and think, the first part of that word is Christ. Amen? Amen. Can't put up major scenes in some places. Can't talk about Christ in schools anymore. I remember when I, when I went to, when I was in first grade. Believe it or not, I remember that. <laughs> we lived in Holloway Terrace. And behind me, there was a school called Rose Hill School. Any of you remember Rose Hill School? Wow. Some of you are old as me, huh? <laughs> you remember that? I went to first, second, uh, first, yeah, first and second grade. First grade there. Yeah, first grade there. And my teacher's name, I still remember her name. You believe it? Her name was Mrs. Seville. And in the morning when we all gathered together, we got in class, she opened up the Bible. And she read the Bible to us. She had, verses or whatever. I don't remember exactly what she read. <clears throat> but she read the Bible to us and then and we stood while she read it out of respect. And then while we were standing, you know what we did next? We pledged the flag. We pledged, we pledged allegiance to the flag. There's not much allegiance to our flag today. They throw it in the river, they burn it, they step on it and everything else. Sad commentary, is it not? Speaking of which, next week, I know uh, Wednesday is Veterans Day. And we decided instead of honoring our veterans this morning, we're going to honor our veterans next week. So if you're a veteran, how many veterans do we have in here this morning? Hold your hand. Hold them up real high. Let me see. One, two, keep them up. Three. Three. Oh, four. I'm sorry. I didn't see your hand. All right. Okay, four so far. If you're a veteran out there or you know someone who is, invite them next week. We'd like to honor them in our service uh, next Sunday morning. Men who died for our country. Men who gave of themselves, many of them, uh, for our country. And, of course, we want to honor those who are still here uh, with us. So God's church cannot be shaken. God's church is a precious church. It's the people of God. We're all blood-bought this morning, amen? We're blood-bought believers. God's church will never be shaken. They've tried to shake it. I'm sure in the future there may be a lot more problems coming. I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Who knows? But I know the Bible says, In the last days, perilous times shall come. Then number five, and lastly, 
God's kingdom cannot be shaken. God's kingdom cannot be shaken. <clears throat> In Hebrews, <clears throat> yeah, excuse my throat. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28 says, Wherefore are we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved? Wherefore are we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved? The word moved means shaken. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. We continue to serve a holy God. God's kingdom cannot be shaken. Pharaoh built a kingdom and it fell. David built a kingdom and it fell. Alexander, Caesar, Napoleon built their kings and they fell. But God, his building, his work, his kingdom is never going to fail. It's never going to fall. It cannot be shaken. The kingdom is unique because it's spiritual in nature, in nature, and the king of that kingdom is our Savior himself. Amen. And it will never, ever, ever going to be shaken. Soon, God is going to shake even more the kingdoms of this world. Every knee shall bow. Every knee is going to bow one day. But we have the word of God. We have eternal life. To share with a world that needs to hear it. I know the virus and everything that's going on right now. Things really don't look so well. But we have to remember. God knows it all and he understands it all. And we don't quit sharing the word and giving out tracts and inviting people to come to church. Because of what's going on. We need to be faithful to God's house. We need to be faithful to God's word. This world needs to be seen that there's something different in us. <clears throat> if they don't see something different in us, what's going to make them want the Lord Jesus Christ? They have to see something different in us. So, with that this morning, I gave you five things. God's throne cannot be shaken. God's word cannot be shaken. The Son of God cannot be shaken. God's church cannot be shaken. And God's kingdom cannot be shaken. God is shaking the world. <clears throat> Maybe he needs to shake the church a little bit too. It's so easy to become lethargic. Oh, I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. Nothing else matters. There's plenty that matters. He hasn't taken us home yet. And there's still work to be done. There's still souls to be saved. And we're the ones who lead people to Christ. We don't save anyone, but we give them the word of God that says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Romans 10, 13. In Romans 5, 8, but God commended or demonstrated his love toward us. Even though while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Paul made it very clear in Romans, and you heard me say this a million times, but it always bears repeating. In Romans chapter 1, verse 14, he says, I am debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. We owe it to them. We're debtors to them to give the word of God. And then in verse 15, he says, for as much as in me is, <clears throat> I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. And then verse 16 he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, verse 17, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. The just shall live by faith. Amen. That's how we live. We're debtors. We need to be ready and not ashamed. And that phrase, I am not ashamed, the sad part about it is many who, who claim Christ are ashamed. We know people. We fellowship with people. We see people. We rub elbows with people and never ask them anything, anything about their spiritual life. Do you go to church? you know Christ is your Savior? We have friends like that. We never ask them anything. And they may be unsaved if they died. They split hell wide open. Where we never say a word. And Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way. If he never said anything else, that would be enough. <laughs> I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's all through him, not anyone else. Do you know him as Savior? Have you trusted him as Savior? 
Do you know if you were to die right now at quarter to 12, that you would go to heaven? My dear friends, those by Facebook Live, the internet, and those of you in here, God is shaking this world. <clears throat> but remember it says in Hebrews 12, 1, he's the author and finisher of our faith. He knows all about what's going on. He knows. He knows. And this perfect will is going to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we just follow the word. We follow the word. We follow the word. We follow Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Every head bowed and every eye closed. And this morning as you soul search, as you soul search this morning, what do you find? Do you find a person that knows Christ as Savior? Do you find a person who's been born again? Do you find a person who's on their way to heaven? Maybe you don't. Maybe you do not. Oh, my dear friend, Jesus is coming. He's coming. And when he does, if he comes by rap, when he comes, if he raptures us, when he, when he raptures us and takes us home, will you be with the blood bought believers? Do you know for sure you're a born-again child of God? Does your life back up what the Word of God says? Do you have a thirst for the Word of God? Do you read the Word of God? Do you share the Word of God? Do you study the Word of God? Do you invite people? Do you lead people to Christ? See, it's all about what a born-again child of God is supposed to do. Do you minister in the ministry that God has given us? How are you living this Christian life? One day you're going to stand before a holy God and give an account. How will you stand? How will you stand? Maybe this morning you're not sure you're saved. Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved. I prayed and asked the Lord to save me, but, you know, I never read the word. I really don't have any desire for church. I come once in a while. I make excuses not to come when I really could come. I, I, never, I never share the word with anyone. I never ask anyone if they're saved. I just kind of go about my merry way, and that's about it. Well, <clears throat> I'm glad I'm not your judge, but that's not very much of an evidence that you're a child of God. Because the Bible says in my life verse, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, be it all things become new. Are you new? Or are you old? Where are you? Pastor, pray for me. Pray for me. I'm not sure I'm saved, or I know I'm not saved. I know I'm not born again. Anyone here in this auditorium this morning? There's quite a few people here this morning. Anyone in this auditorium say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm not sure I'm a born again child of God. My life doesn't back up what the Word of God says, and I'm concerned. I'm concerned about whether I'm going to heaven or not. Anyone anywhere this morning? Anyone anywhere as I look around? I don't see any hands. I, I pray that's the case. Those of you who are watching by Facebook Live or by the internet, same, same thing. Are you sure? Are you sure? Well, you better make sure. Because once you close your eyes in death, there's no changing any of that. Wouldn't it be sad to think you're on your way to heaven and you die and you find out you're never going to get there? Or the rapture occurs and you're left. Oh, how sad that would be need to read Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and following. That'll shake you. <laughs> That's for sure. That'll shake you. Christians this morning, how close are you to the Lord? The Bible says in James 4, 8, draw nigh unto God, he'll draw nigh unto you. Are you close to him? Are you this morning? Maybe you're going through, a, going through something this morning. I don't know. This virus we're going through has many people discouraged and despair, distraught. You have to remember, God's still on the throne. He knows all about it. He knows all about it. You're his child. He loves you. He's going to take care of things. Just like you took care of your children, God's going to take care of his children. But maybe this morning you need prayer. You say, Pastor, you know, I know I'm saved and on the way to heaven, but sometimes I get discouraged. Sometimes I get in despair. I let things bother me and I shouldn't. Just pray that God gives me the courage and the endurance to keep on keeping on for Him because I love Him. Anyone this morning as a child of God need prayer? Yeah, I see that hand. 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 Anyone else? Raise your hand this morning. Pray. Yes, I see that hand in the back. Pastor, pray for me. Yes, I see that hand. You may put it down. I see that hand. You may put it down. Anyone else? Pastor, pray for me. I need prayer this morning. I need prayer. Maybe those of you who are watching 
by Facebook or in, uh, live or by the internet. You need prayer, call. I'll give you my phone number. 302-373-0116. Call me personally. 302-373-0116. It's a very public number. I give it out all the time. <laughs> so give me a call. Give me a call. Be more than happy to talk to you. You have it out because you ask not. You can get it. You can get the help if you want it. <clears throat> Let's bow our heads for just a few moments before we're dismissed. And let's just spend a couple minutes with the Lord in silence. Silence is golden. See this right here? And there's one on the other side. That's our new cameras. Amen? That's our new cameras. <clears throat> now, they're not hooked up yet. We have, uh, we ordered everything. I think Ken said everything is here. The only thing that's not here yet, because believe it or not, I guess the, the company that sells the camera and all the equipment that goes with it, they don't sell the wire. Why would they do that? It'd be so much easier to get it from them. So Ken has the wire or the cable, whatever it is they got to use. I don't know all that technical stuff. Ordered, and it's going to be coming in. Now, those of you who are watching by Facebook Live and those of you who are watching by Internet, we're going to need some help. We're going to need some help once the wire, the cable, whatever you want to call it, comes in, it's got to be run. And it's got to be run between the floors, which is always fun. And uh, Ken's going to need some help. So... I don't know how soon it's coming in, but I want you to think about that. Keep that on your mind that somewhere in the near future, I think Ken said a couple weeks maybe. Is that right? Is that what he said? A week or so? I'm not really sure. But very soon, <clears throat> um, the cable will be in, and we're going to need some men to help run the cable uh, underneath. And, uh, Ken knows how to do all that and put it where it needs to be, and that way we can get these <laughs> things operational. We're going to have three of them. One, two, and one back there. Coming in Friday. Coming in when? Friday. Friday? This, this coming Friday? Friday. Ask him uh, how soon he wants to install it. Friday night. Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> See? If you're waiting on me, you're wasting time, you know? So, if any of you men can contact Ken Carey, and uh, we'll set it up with you to come in Friday night. Listen, guys, we need, we need to get it taken care of because these cameras are old, they're analog, they're not digital, and they're not working like they should. These are digital. These are nice. So uh, praise the Lord. God has given us the cameras through the giving of our people here in Fairwinds Baptist Church, and we want to get them installed and operational as quickly as we can. So, guys, if you can help, please see Brother Ken. He can line you up for Friday. Lord willing, it'll come in Friday. And what he can do just to make sure, he can, if you give your name and number, he can give you a call and let you know yay or nay. Because you know, you know when you order something, they say, like Amazon says, it's coming in tomorrow. They just don't tell you which tomorrow, you know. <laughs> so I know I wait for their stuff sometimes. Oh, it's going to be here tomorrow. And it never comes tomorrow. Because tomorrow is always today, the day before tomorrow. You got that? <laughs> a little confusing, isn't it? But anyway, so you can get your name and number and give you a call. Yes, it's here. We're going to do it. No, it's not here. We're going to have to wait until, and he can tell you when. So if you can help, please contact Ken Carey, and uh, maybe you can stop back there this morning and see him, and we can get this uh, taken care of. I'm anxious to get them uh, all hooked up so we can start using them, and uh, the picture will be better. The sound will be better. We can do it on Facebook Live. We can do it on the Internet. I think it can even go to YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not really sure about all that. But uh, praise the Lord, it's in. Yeah, the Gideons will be in the back. All the information they have is in the back. If you have any questions, you can stop, see them, let them know you're praying for them. Maybe you want to join or whatever the case may be, contribute. That would be great. That's above your tithe, of course. Always make sure the tithe and the offering uh, for missions or whatever comes to the church first. And then, you know, anything above that's fine. 
doesn't make any difference. Well, you hungry? No? I got another message I can preach. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> All right, let's stand as we prepare to dismiss. Remember, this social distance, the last pews, start first and go out. Father in heaven, we thank you for this Lord's Day. We thank you, Father, even though this world is being shaken, we know that you'll never be shook. We praise your name for that, that you love us, you care for us, you meet our needs as your dear children. Bless everyone here this morning that's here, those who watch by Facebook Live and by the internet. We thank you for them. We love all of them. Even if they're not here with us, Lord, we thank you for them. Pray that you meet all the needs of all of our people, your people, in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.